Thank you, Bill Choir. And if you like uh, Bill Choirs and you want to see a, you know, a, a guest Bill Choir that we're having here on the, what is it, June 15th? June 50, the Shoreline Ringers. I mean, uh, these people are, what, what do you call that level? You got bronze, you got, you got silver, and you got gold? Yeah. Uh, platinum, whatever they are. Yeah. Uh, or your tin. What? Tin. <laughs> but the Shoreline Ringers. <laughs> but anyway, the Shoreline Ringers, and several of them are, are friends of this church in the past also, so that'll be a, a good event to, uh, to uh, come to, and it's also free. And there's several other announcements, and there's too many to go into in detail. Don't forget Ladies' Night Out uh, for you ladies who have signed up. The Red Wagon Drive every week. Community meals every week. A prayer and Bible study every week. And um, the Grand Heights uh, Open House Day. I think we're set with uh, people to, uh, to, um, uh, to host that uh, on, on that day. And the only other item I mentioned it was the Stewardship Committee is looking for contributions for the month-long raffle contributions and uh, participation when that uh, time comes. Bill. So, so I'll, right here. You have another announcement. I'll ask, I'll just add one more to say welcome to you all on this Pentecost Sunday. Yes. Pay attention because the spirit is blowing. <laughs> and I think Rachel has an announcement. Yeah. Good morning. Um, so in the past, whenever we've had a senior in high school graduating, we've purchased Bibles um, for the congregation to write notes inside the covers, highlight um, Bible verses that are special to you. And this year, Josh Bright is graduating in just a couple weeks. So I have the Bible. Um, I have pens uh, for you to write inside the covers. I have highlighters. Um, so I'll have it in Dutton Hall uh, during coffee hour for the, this week and next week. Um, so please write messages. And the idea is that when he moves on to the next stage of his life, he has reminders that he is loved and, loved and supported here. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank, Thank you, Rachel. Pastor Lee, do you have another announcement or anything? I'll just say you'll notice that we have Bill Blaisdell here as our liturgist oh, yeah. and not Joan Jordan. I give thanks for his presence with us. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm not Joan Jordan. And I, uh, <laughs> yeah. and I just wanted to uh, welcome everybody. Good morning and welcome to Groton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming congregation. And no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. And we have heard the announcements, and let's become a, uh, a people of worship and join in on the uh, call to worship, the responsive call to worship. Even after the resurrection, when the disciples were weighed down with worry, Jesus, Jesus assured them that they, they were not alone. alone. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Even after the resurrection, when the disciples were burdened by their fears, Jesus calmed their troubled hearts. hearts. Do, do not let your hearts, hearts be troubled, be troubled and, and do not let, let them be afraid. be afraid. Even after the resurrection, when we struggle with our faith, Jesus blesses us, us with comfort and hope. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Especially after the resurrection, when our souls are dry and barren, the Holy, the Holy Spirit goes through our lives, bringing us new life. Hallelujah. And please join your voices now in the hymn uh, on Pentecost they gathered, number 237 in your hymnal.
if you would now please join in the uh, unison prayer of confession. Holy Spirit, we're not, we're not sure, sure we're, we're ready, ready for your, your awesome, awesome power to blow through, through our, our lives. lives. We've we're grown, grown comfortable, comfortable with our familiar, familiar habits and our bland routines. We're, we're afraid to give up our waking slumber and face, face the truth that we do not truly live. When we cling to our ways and the safety of familiar paths, wake us up, shake us up, heat us up, and breathe your life into us. Walk with us, O God, and give us the courage to follow the way that is lit by the fire of your Spirit. On this day of Pentecost, we pray for the audacity to ride the winds of change. Amen. And I just heard what you just said. And I hope those words take root in your hearts and souls. And so as we go forward this day, let us hear these words of Jesus. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Even in the midst of our fears and doubts with what's going on in this world today, may the peace of the Holy Spirit be seen so that you know it will prevail. Let us give thanks for these words as we go in to singing the Gloria Patri. Please be seated. On this day of Pentecost, we will be hearing once again in the scriptures the day that the church was, quote, created. And so on this day, we invite you to offer your gifts to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ in this particular church, but so that that message will never die. Thank you.
please join with me in sharing the prayer of dedication as found in your bulletins. Pentecost God, take our hearts and set them on fire. Take our lives and transform them. Take our church and resurrect it with your life-giving spirit. And take our gifts and use them for the fulfillment of your vision of peace and unity. Amen. Thank you. Well, we move into the time of sharing our children's message. And I do see one young person here, but I see the young person within each one of you. And I have these gloves here that I used as I was playing the handbells that I dearly love to play. I don't know how many of you have had the chance to do so, but one of the joys of my life at a very young age. I was invited into learning how to play the flute and then the piano and learning how to understand the language of music. Today we will be talking about language and what happened during the Pentecost experience that was in response to what happened at the Tower of Babel. And if you don't know what happened, Stay tuned and you will learn. <laughs> but we're going to be talking about language. And one of the beautiful things that I have realized and thought about further is that music is understood no matter what formal language you speak, correct? And no matter what mood you are in, music can reach you. If you're sad, something can speak to you and maybe move you out of that sadness into a better place. And sometimes it can help you do the real celebration, such as what we played at the beginning, right? Folks, the, the Carillon celebration. But we're also going to be moving into a second piece shortly. But I just wanted to speak to, have any of you had a piece of music that really touched you? Yeah, Doris. But no, you don't have to, okay. <laughs> no, no. But, but there is music that, that just helps us, right, as we go through life. And sometimes that's the first thing you want to listen to in the day. And so I give thanks. Sometimes you can hear it without even any formal music happening, right, in your heart and soul. And so one of the pieces that I realized I could lead into also is what Janice is doing this summer. And that's just a natural sequence because I was really caught up in the music piece of it because I love music. Go ahead. Well, first, the music committee wants to invite you and, and your family to come and share okay. the joy of the Shoreline Ringers. Um, and this concert will be on Wednesday, June 15th at 7 p.m. It's a free concert. We want to thank all the people who underwrote the cost for the program and come and, and enjoy. Um, and when, when you're all thrilled about handbell ringing, please consider uh, signing up for the Junior Handbell Festival, which is uh, Thursday nights, 6.45 to 7.45 p.m. Uh, it will be right here in the sanctuary. We are gearing it towards ages 7 through 12, but I understand there will be a few uh, adults around to help. And if you're young in heart and want to come learn, you are certainly welcome to come and join us. And, and please see me after church if you would like to register. Thank you. Janice is one who truly values the gift of music and is very much a part of her life, and she teaches anyone who was wanting to learn the language of music, how to include it in their own personal lives. And so I realize that we do have this opportunity coming up. And it's just fascinating. If you've never played handbells and you've wanted to, look for that, because it's just such fun to be part of a choir. And you, know, you can make mistakes, right, folks? 
<laughs> we, we can flip two pages at one time and go, where are we? <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> it, it's, it brings us quite amount of joy, and so I give thanks. But pay attention as we go through the rest of the service about how God has provided many different ways to reach us and speak to us and sometimes bring us comfort and sometimes call us out of our comfort zones so that we will be present and be able to help others step up and do what they need to do, but also learn the ways of love. And so I give thanks, especially for the gift of music in my own life and for the ways in which it has helped me to be present to others. Amen. And so on that note, let us move into the next piece of music, the handball anthem. This is a special request because it's so beautiful.
And so while they are doing the, uh, those tasks, I move into a time of sharing the prayers, the joys, and the concerns of our congregation. At this time in particular, oops, sorry. I know I want to start first with the fact that on Tuesday, we will have the joy of celebrating the 100th birthday of one of our members, namely Margaret Shearer. And I don't know how long she's been a member here, but she's not able to be with us today. She was not feeling able to, to be with us, and she was hoping to, but she can't. And so there are cards. Uh, there's cards out here to be signed. Yeah. Uh, last week we did announce that all members, we would like them to send the cards. Except for them. Okay. If you would send cards separately, we'll be glad to have you give you the address. Yeah. But also, um, after the service, a friend suggested last night that perhaps we could gather either here at the front of the sanctuary or in Dutton Hall and sing her happy birthday, and I will record it, okay? So if you would like to do that, please join with us afterwards. That would be great. Um, I'm going to move into also wishing Mary a happy birthday tomorrow. <laughs> happy birthday. Are there any other birthdays this week that we should be aware of since I mentioned Okay, but I do want to move into the other concern that we all have, uh, which is the sorrow, uh, the grief for all of those who are trying to uh, recover from the tragedies that have been happening in our country. And there have been lots of conversations, and I know that you are all here, and I don't know if anybody wants to put it in words. I will open the floor to anyone who wants to offer prayer for the gun violence and for the, the, the wish that we would move into our leaders. Would, my words are that we would have leaders that would be able to find the resolution um, so that we could, we could walk together in peace and not be witnessing more stories of more tragedies. Are there any particular prayers? Yes, go ahead, Ingrid. That people will find the love for our children over the love of guns. Amen. Heart, sad, the sad part is not mainly our children at this point that we're fearing for, but it's also others, such as, yes, go ahead. That we remember that we light a candle against gun violence every week in this church, and that we consider what things we can do that will actually work, not things that are And Doris has brought in a candle that is lit every single Sunday to remind us of uh, praying, working against gun violence and that we will find the activities that will help us make sure that there is action that's taken and not just words. Yes. Yes. Parents, the families, the friends, the ones who were shot and survived, they suffer for years and years afterwards. And so Ingrid is adding prayers for those who are grieving, the families and friends and people within the communities who are trying to deal with the realities of what they have experienced and seen. Um, there was one more piece. Uh, and they're, they're dealing with the consequences for many, many years. And so we pray for all. And in truth, it's, it's the whole country at this time. And so, Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, Mary. I'd like to offer prayer for the people that are consistently downgrading this crisis. Okay. And that their hearts would be changed. That they would be turned around and see the hurt and pain that all of this catastrophe brings to other people and be concerned about their needs. Uh, Mary's lifting up prayers for those who are downgrading this crisis and that their hearts may be turned as they become more conscious of the pain that is unfolding. Oh God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes, Bob. I put a call out to all teachers. Uh, we 
we are a very, we are one of the biggest unions in the United States. We have a voice. I posted it on Facebook. The reply was, the police union does too. We should not be afraid to speak. You know, we should say what we want. If it offends a friend, a family member, so be it. If it saves a life, that's what we need to do. Okay, so Bonnie's calling, just reminding people that the teachers are in a union. I said to the teachers, we are the union. We are the voice. You are the voice. And so you're, you're saying, let us not be afraid to speak and take action. And that's for all of us. So God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes. Right, so we lift up prayers as well for, I'm gonna say the funding of mental health, but also the, um, the ability for people to know what is available for them and so that they can seek it and that we encourage it as a part of the, our well-being. Oh God of grace, hear our prayers, yes. Ah, there's a big one. <laughs> Doris is saying that the young people not be frightened and be filled with a um, sense of powerless, powerlessness, but rather be filled with the love of Christ. Now that's our charge to help that happen. That's, yeah, pay attention to all that is here. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Help us to be those who help that happen. Yes, there's so much more here, I know that we would all be offering prayers for. And so I invite you to hold that within your hearts and minds. I will move into prayers. We'll continue that sense and offer prayers for people in Ukraine um, who are also overcoming the realities of violence. And may there be an end to that aggression. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. And let us also lift up prayers. We have had several people within our own congregation who have gone through times with COVID this week and last week. And so it is an ongoing struggle and crisis within our own country. And so we continue to pray for those who are dealing with COVID and we give great thanks for those in the medical world who continue their care. Um, we are also in the day of Pentecost. And so I invite you to again, pay attention to the words that are in scripture that are reminding us of a very historical day. And again, I'm going to go into my sermon with all of that. But on this day, we're going to, I'm going to invite you to, is there any more specific prayers that I need to hear? Yes. Okay, so blessing for Kendall and all that she loves to do in her work. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Well, let us, I, we are going to move into the saying of the Lord's Prayer. And being Pentecost, you will hear that there was a one message that was spoken, and people in many different languages were able to hear that message. And for today, we are going to be hearing some people speak the Lord's Prayer in different languages. And I'm going to say we weren't sure if others could say it in a different language. And if you can, you are welcome to join in the saying of that. And so we have Bill who's going to be saying it in Latin. And I think Doris is going to say it in Greek. Uh, pardon? And, and then um, Bill is going to say it in German. Is there anybody else who knows a different language with that? <laughs> okay, so, pardon? Okay, all right, so let us then move into the saying of the Lord's Prayer, and I'm going to invite Bill and Bill and Doris to uh, rise and just kind of lead us. Thank you. We just say, I Father, unser, der du bist im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name. Dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, 
wie im Himmel, so auch auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie wir auch unsere Schuldigen vergeben. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern löse uns von den Bösen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. And let us now all join in. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy prayer. Thy I thank you for your offers this day and for the prayers. I don't know if you'll be able to sing this, read all the words with me, but we have an insert here for our next hymn, which is a really beautiful hymn, God of Change and Glory, but it's known as Many, Many Gifts. Okay, thank you. Please rise and join in singing. Diversity. 
seated. Today's first reading from the Hebrew Bible is uh, Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with a top in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, look, they are one people. They have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the, all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. You want to read the Acts passage? The Acts passage? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, let, me read, let me read it in uh, English or German. <laughs> Whatever you want. No, wait okay. till you get to uh, verse twenty, to verse nine. Okay. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And now, and how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, you should have prepared me for this, and the parts of Libya belong to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters say, uh, shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in these, those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist and the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> and then we have this passage from the Gospel of John in chapter 14. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. And may God add a blessing upon these mysterious words of scripture and upon our reflections this day. I'll just share that on Thursdays we have Bible study and it was a very spirited study, was it not? On these passages. And so we move into a time of my personal reflections and I will share with you that um, I had a rather interesting twist in my reflections last night, so stay tuned. We're on Pentecost Sunday where we are told in Genesis that there was one language, everybody was understanding what was going on. And then they got to the point where they thought, oh, we could get more powerful if we build a tower and all that. And so God took an action. And now there were many voices. And then on Pentecost, where there are people gathered from all over, where they're speaking many different languages, suddenly they are hearing the same message, even in their own language, speaking a message of love and proclaiming Jesus as Savior. For any of you who have not looked at these passages or reflected on them recently, I remind you that this is an historical moment in, in the world, in the life of the people who were following Jesus. It was the creation of the church. And it changed the lives of so many people on that day. When the breath of God came down and blew across all of those who were there and brought them to life in a whole new way that they could never imagine. According to Luke, there were 3,000 people gathered on that day trying to figure out what was going on. And on that day, the disciples realized they could baptize all of these in the name of Jesus Christ. And the, the scripture says that the, the spirit blew even on the Gentiles. That means anyone who was outside of the Jewish traditions, even on you and me, those who are walking from many different walks of life. No matter who you are, you are welcome here, was more or less what was being said. The spirit was being offered to lead the people into the freedom in their relationship with God in order to bless their spirits so that they could have a whole new way of understanding life. And in the midst of that, experience the sense of love and learn how to share it and then carry forward the teachings of Jesus. They were being called into that new life with God's hope and trust. Can you imagine what God's hope was on that day? Think about it. Pouring that spirit on upon the people and watching them respond. They were being invited to let go of any false idols that they were worshiping on that day, anything that was less than the true God. And so as I reflected on these passages today, for this week, for this week for today, how do we in this particular congregation and our extended families hear this story and hear what the invitation is for us and choose to become a part of this ongoing healing message of God in the world especially at this time in history, especially when you consider all those prayers that you were offering earlier. There are so many broken souls in this world right now who don't turn to God or Jesus. They don't believe some of the stories that they've been hearing, and, or is it because they've heard those stories and they just don't like the idea that there's that sense of judgment and maybe damnation in the midst of it? How are we those who hear the message and know that there is a message of salvation and hope and love and in truth the invitation to a freedom that we cannot just use that word. They have to come and experience it. There's a freedom of the spirit that is so priceless and the world cannot give it. 
How do we share that message to those who have closed their doors of listening to that message of love? In truth, if you go back in history, you know that that is the story of the human race, right? There's constantly been that call, that work of the, the disciples, anyone who is Christian, trying to teach that message to those who don't want to hear it. It's not anything new, but when you think about what was going on in the Jewish community, something was going on that all of a sudden God says, i gotta, I got to change some dynamic here, and all of a sudden we have the story of the Incarnation. As I understand the unfolding of scriptures, God was seeing a new way to bring about the relationship with humanity and realize that all the previous messages were not being understood. And so there was a crossroads. And I, this is my interpretation of God speak, thinking, how do I get across the message to the people that I just want them to walk in the ways of love and compassion so that all people can thrive and experience unconditional life as expressed, I thought I was trying to express it through the works and the writings of the prophets. What do I do now? And so we have the story of the incarnation, where the word became flesh and lived among us. The hope was there that people would finally get the message that, that through Jesus, God is, is helping us to learn the ways of how to relate to one another and learn the ways of love, but how important forgiveness is so that the relationships can continue and not be broken. And it's not about proving how perfect we are so that we can go into heaven and not hell. And it's not about saying we have to live according to the visions of how to be, quote, proper, because different people can offer a different definition of proper. As I see it now, we are at another major crossroads in our human history. The real question is, is will we get this message of love? Or will we see the destruction of one another and the earth? It's a fascinating thing to talk to my children who are so worried about the climate crisis, but that's another time and another topic. Will we get the message about love and figure out how to walk together as brothers and sisters and learn how to thrive and not get caught up in trying to outdo one another? I pondered, why is this so hard to grasp? Right? Why is this so hard? It sure seems like it's a simple message. As I look back and I think about what was going on here in the last few weeks when you were doing the yard sale, there were, there were days when um, I would just come up and I'd see people working in Dutton Hall. And they would be chit-chatting and they'd be receiving the items and there would be all kinds of conversations going on. And there would be caring happening to one another. And then you open the doors and people came in and it was just fascinating to watch what was going on. It was not a message about Jesus at that time. It was about love and relationship. That's all we're supposed to be doing, right? Love and relationship. That's what Jesus was doing, no matter who the person was in front of him. I witnessed that unfolding, and then we have instead what's happening in the rest of the country and the world, where people are being impacted by greed and the grasping of power, and broken souls are acting out and causing harm. In our country, we are all saddened as we hear what has happened, as we are now living through this pandemic of mass shootings that completely defy logic and go against the teachings of love. I'm going to say it in my words that we're witnessing how the broken souls are acting out because they do not believe that there's somebody that will hear their pain and they just, they don't know how to go out as you were saying, how do I go out and find somebody who will help me with my mental illness? They don't understand that in those terms. And so to end their ag agony, they are choosing instead to cause harm and it, taking the lives of the innocent, unprotected people. The children, the elderly, the lame. It defies everything that Jesus came to teach. It defies how we see the ways of love and how to live. And so I feel that we are at another crossroads in the human race. And it's on our shoulders in one respect. It's on our hearts to figure out how do we do this? That's Doris's words. How do we do this? How can we break the cycle? 
God is not some magic genie who's going to come down from heaven and stop people from picking up a gun and shooting. We know that. We know that prayers in and of themselves don't seem to be doing the work that we want them to be doing. And so we see that the wounds in these people's souls and psyches are incredibly deep. And so they just lash out. We each know that there is free will in this world. That's the gift that God has given us. So what do we choose? To listen to the teachings that God has offered down through the ages? Or turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to them? Today we heard in the Genesis story about how God made a choice. After watching the people build this Tower of Babel all the way up with a sense that they're trying to grasp God's power. They want to do things on their own. And says, we've got to diffuse them through different languages so that they don't continue this path of grasping for power. But with that diffusion, it's hard for us in 2022 to hear the one message about how to overcome the diversity and that tension and find the ways to listen to one another and walk together in love. That's what Jesus was teaching, love one another. In our diversity, there is confusion. As we hear others speak in the different languages that we don't understand, and we may get annoyed at times because we don't sense our value there. And history shows how human egos get involved and wars break out. I'm going to move into a positive vein, though, to close this. I was intrigued as I was watching the NBC News the other night with the closing story, which was about all of the college graduation ceremonies and about those who were offering the messages to the grads. They jumped from one speaker to the next, and you could see how they were all actually offering the same message in various ways. And they were saying, as you go out into the world, do so with pride and don't let anyone else define you. Don't let anyone tell you you're not good enough or try to snuff out your light. Hold fast to who you are. You define you. I think you might notice there's one little piece missing there, but I was listening with joy to the encouragement to the people to stay true to themselves. But last night as I was uh, trying to find out how to close my sermon for today, I was contemplating these stories in Genesis and in Acts and about the, the one language, many languages, and all of a sudden I had this aha moment come in because I've heard about this one experience that people are having where no matter what language they're speaking, they're having the same message being given to them. This is really kind of intriguing for me. How God has taken what I will say a big step to help us, and I burst out laughing. Consider all the advancements that are going on in the medical world and science. Many people are seeing that and saying, well, there can't be a God, and they walk away from it. But I'm seeing how the divine spirit is actually being very clever. I have learned that there are over 10 million people walking the earth right now who have had near-death experiences. Were you aware of that? 10 million people. The really amazing thing is that when they go into their experience, they go into the blinding light and they they hear and sense the presence of either Jesus or God. They can't see a, a, a person, but they can hear a message. And in that message, there's only one message that comes. And Peter Panagor, who talks about this, says that no matter what race, what religion, what creed, what nationality that they are in, whether they are on a hospital bed, whether they are at home, whether in a car accident, or whatever the cause of their near-death experience, when they come back, they have one message, and that message is love. Period. End of discussion. Be a messenger of my love in the world. No matter what language they were speaking on this earth, they could all understand it. I found that really intriguing. And so I share with you that that message is not one of condemnation or judgment. It is one of welcome and love. 
and inviting them to be part of that ongoing story today. And so as we go forward, may we choose to listen for that message and allow it to fill us and carry us forward into the future. And so as we go into communion, I invite you to consider how that message is coming to you. But before we do so, I'm going to offer my words of may God's peace and blessing be upon us all this day. And as we get ready to serve communion, I invite you to turn to your neighbor and greet them in the peace of Christ. Amen. Please be seated. And now let us share in the sacrament of communion. As the seed which was scattered to all corners of the field comes together to make bread on our table, so God's people gather from all corners of the world to share the great banquet of thankfulness and hope. At God's table, there are no divisions. 
at God's table, all are welcome to share in the bounty of abundant life. Here at God's table, we join with all who seek to follow the way and follow the voice of love. Here we taste the grace eternal, and here we know that God is good. And so let us pray. The spirit of the living God be with you all. And in this season, when we enjoy the harvest from last fall, we pause to give thanks to God. It is a good thing to give thanks for all God has given us, God of growth and harvest of gifts. Here we pause to give thanks for the abundance of our lives, for the fruit of the earth, for the food on our tables, for the love of our brothers and sisters and faith around the world, for the promise of hope in a world given to despair, for the possibility of peace in a world torn apart by violence. For these and many other things, we offer our thanks and praise. And we remember the stories of our forefathers and foremothers in the faith, people like Sarah and Abram, Miriam and Moses, Peter and Mary prophets and leaders, and all who have proclaimed your hope over the centuries. And we lift up the countless saints who have gone before us, particularly from this church, to teach about the possibilities of being your people. In the middle of our thankfulness, we give special thanks for a man named Jesus, the one we call Christ, child of Mary and child of grace. He came to teach about the wonders of your love. He came to break down the walls of division among your people, and as he ate with the misunderstood and the least of this world, he showed us what the glorious banquet of life could be like. We give thanks for his witness and commitment to the way. We give thanks for his healing of broken spirits and broken bodies. We give thanks for his life, his death, and his resurrection. And here now, as we gather at the table to which Jesus calls us, we remember another table long ago and far away. And at that table, Jesus gathered with friends to tell again the ancient story of liberation from bondage. And then at the end of the meal, he took the bread. And after giving you thanks, he blessed it and broke it and passed it among them and said, This is my body which is being broken for all. Take and eat, and whenever you eat of it, remember me. And then he took the cup of blessing, and he blessed it and passed it to them, saying, This is the seal of the new covenant. Take and drink and remember. And so God of the cross, the empty tomb, and the banquet, we eat and drink and remember giving thanks for the love Jesus poured out on all he met, Jew and Gentile, sinner and saint, healthy and broken. In our remembering, we state the mystery of our faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And so, you, God, you call us to, the, to sing the songs of faith in places both familiar and strange. You call us to share the banquet of faith with longtime friends and new acquaintances. We pray that you will pour out your spirit on this table and these people. As we eat and drink, may we feel the wind of the spirit in our hair, the fire of the spirit in our bellies, and the love of the spirit in our hearts. And may the presence of the spirit make this meal an occasion of transformation for we who gather to eat it together. And God of the banquet that is and is to come, on this day we gather with people all around the world to share this meal. Creator, our source of love, Christ, love incarnate, and spirit, love's flowing power be praised, now and forever. Amen. And so through the broken bread, we are invited to participate in the body of Christ, ministering to you in Christ's name. I offer you the bread. Thank you. Thank you.
and let us share the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we are invited to participate in the new life that Christ brings because of the forgiveness of sins. Today is a brand new day. Let us give thanks for this gift to empower our new life. Ministering to you in Christ's name, it is with joy that I offer you the cup.
And now let us share the cup of blessing. And with these elements coursing through our bodies to empower us to share Christ's love, let us now join in the prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we thank you for your mighty acts of deliverance. When you enable us to cross over from despair to hope, from brokenness to wholeness, from death to life, we thank you for the deep love revealed through Jesus, which moved him to risk himself for the redemption of humanity and for the grace we experience in receiving these symbols of the life he gave. In response to his gift, we offer our commitment to you and pray you will continue to pour your spirit upon us to empower us to serve in your name and love. Amen. And now let us join in our closing hymn, number 433, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Amen. And so let us go forth this day knowing that the God who made this amazing universe is creating you anew every day. Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, offers you peace that never dies. And the Holy Spirit is setting your hearts on fire <laughs> right here and right now. Go in peace and be transformed that you may help change the world. Amen. Amen.